All right, everyone, welcome to a unexpected episode of Before We Leave. So yes, we wrapped up this series several weeks ago now at this point. Um, we got to a good place uh, with our different planets and our supply lines and everything like that. And we wrapped it up. I think we were on episode 25 or 26 back then. Uh, and that's when we ultimately called it quits for the time being. Now, I did mention back then that maybe I would jump back into things as updates started coming out. And what do we have today? Well, we have an update that came out for Before We Leave. This is the over and under update. So obviously we got some text here on the screen that will run you through some of the items that were changed, but there is a huge listing of things that were changed in this update. I have it pulled up here on the side so I can run through some things, but obviously we're gonna run through some of these things. We're gonna boot into the game, kind of mess around a little bit, uh, see what additionally was changed. So it might be a little bit shorter episode than normal, but I just really wanted to show you guys what was done for this update. And I think it actually adds a few cool things uh, for us to experience, but more so a uh, convenience of life or convenience of playthrough um, items that were added or changed, I should say. So anyway, so hello again. We've been hard at work adding new content to Before We Leave. This time we've added a bunch of new colorful overlays that help you view different aspects of how your towns are working. Look for the new icon above the roads button. It's pretty cool. I'll show you that once we boot in. We've also added more information and controls to the resources up in the top bar, including the ability to reserve some resources so they won't be consumed by peeps on an island. That's actually kind of interesting that we could backlog some of the resources so they won't be utilized. Um, this is useful if you're saving resources to be shipped to a different island or planet. I know we ran into that a few times during our playthrough where we would run out of resources. Um, so this actually could be a useful add-on to have. As well as the UI for configuring the warehouses and ports have been updated significantly. This makes it easy uh, for you to see what's stored. For warehouses, you'll also be able to choose how much of each resource to store. So before, it was segmented based on the amount. So if you had uh, four items stored in a capacity warehouse of 120, uh, you do four divided by 12. What, four, eight, 12, or was it three? I think it's three, right? It would be 30, you'd have 30 of those items. So 30 of each of those four items equaling that 120 item capacity. Now it sounds like you could divvy it out differently. So let's say we wanted 50 wood, we wanted 50 stone, and then 20 iron, we could do that. Pretty cool, um, just adding more flexibility to it. Uh, finally, they've changed the resources used by marketplaces to create luxury items, so they're more infinitely available. Not 100% sure, we didn't really get into the marketplaces too much. They do have a link if you wanna check out more of their notes, you can go to their Discord. That's actually what I have up here to the side um, if you wanna get the full in-depth patch notes. And that is what I would definitely recommend if you are really interested in this. So uh, a few additional changes I did wanna call out that I noticed in the patch notes that they don't mention here. They increased storage for food and drink in houses and apartments, which is pretty cool. Uh, they added a notification for when a resource is depleted, which is also awesome to have. So you're not just wondering why something has stopped in a process and trying to spend the time to go back and figure out what is going on. They did change production times for second per uh, resource to resource per minute. Um, so just basically the uh, timing on those resources uh, production times. Um, they shortened a few few of the tool tips that will pop up um, and then like so on and so forth. Uh, there, there are so many things that they have changed in here, which is really, really cool. And they also fixed a few items that were an issues. Um, so I, again, I would definitely recommend checking out the full change log on their Discord. Um, even still, if you love this game, the Discord is a great place to go to uh, enjoy a great community. So we're going to hit this close it out and we're going to hit continue here it has been so long since we've played this game it feels like so it'll be interesting jumping back into it to see it um, i have seen some of the screenshots for this update and it looks really cool the things that they've changed with the ui so let's uh let's take a peek here once we get booted in all right so we are here on our earth planet and i recall we were actually bumped down the timing here uh, we were trying to get our whale, what is this called, our whale charmer up and going to a different tier, and there were different tiers that you could get, I have one, two, three, and four, I believe. It wasn't ultimately anything that was too crazy. So, I gotta remember my controls here. If we take a look through things now, 
we should be able to have a little bit better understanding of certain things, which is really cool to be able to see here. So let me, let me move around here. Let's click through a few things and I'll show you what has changed. So first and foremost, let's focus on the warehouses because we did bring those up. There was a cool thing that they added and warehouses ultimately end up being one of the main things that you utilize in your gameplay. You're going to be using it for every single resource. I'm sure that every single resource will have its own warehouse by the time you get to an end uh, game state. So if we look at this one, we have it set up for wood. We've defined it here. Now they've changed it instead of selecting it like how we had before. There was a list that you could scroll through to select what you wanted. You can now hit this little button here, this little plus button, and select if you want something additional in there. So if we wanted to say, let's have tools in there, well, it automatically is going to distribute it. It's going to cut it in half. So it's going to start taking out the overflow of wood that we have to make place for tools. Now, if we didn't want tools in there, I believe we can just unclick it like so, and it will just be a full wood storage unit, which is pretty cool. Now, there are options in here for delivery. This was added in a earlier patch, so I'm not going to go into that right there. We can also do this, which is kind of cool. So I'm guessing that this is how... Is this how we define? Yeah, this is also another way how you can define how much of that item you want stored in the warehouse. So if you didn't want to define it up here, um, where it automatically breaks it out, we could say, oh, we want only, I don't know, let's say 94 wood to be in here and then we select tools it should do the difference so then 26 tools which is pretty cool to see that you can do it like that now i'm sure our peeps are freaking out because we're messing with our warehouse they're probably moving things in and out uh, like crazy but that is perfectly fine and that'll be for every warehouse like we even have an upgraded warehouse here where it's a higher capacity and it's the same exact way where you can define it even more in more depth i should say which is pretty cool now they did say they also added additional storage into the living quarters for our peeps. Now obviously it's not really going to 100% show that when we look at it because it never really did before. Uh, but it's just something cool to note that that is added in there. So the other big thing that they did add in was the overlays button, which they had mentioned is above the roads button or the, yeah, the build roads button here on the side. There is an overlays button, which um, tip to them out there. I might drop this in their discord. As you can see, every single one of these has a different key binding assigned to it. Uh, however, this one does not. The overlays button does not have a key binding assigned to it. Um, that might be something good to add in so that people, if they're not uh, wanting to click over to the side all the time, they could just hit a button and then, you know, jump right into it. Just a suggestion. If anyone from, uh, from the company is watching this, from the developing company is watching this, uh, so yeah, there's all these different overlays that we can now look at, which is pretty cool. So we have the resource storage. This overlay shows what is being stored in your warehouses and ports. Uh, roads are colored to show how effectively resources are being transported. Uh, select a building to see all the recent trips to and from your warehouse and ports, which is pretty cool. So if we click on this, it, it definitely, um, at least on our island here, it creates a lot of of lag holy smokes i did not expect that what if we pause the game here for a second uh, it definitely makes it a little bit easier but i think it's only giving us so much additional um, strain on the game because we have so many warehouses here like so many warehouses i'm guessing on other islands where there's maybe not as much we wouldn't have as big of a problem with um you know the the effect on the gameplay so if we uh swing around here we can look in and we can look at different warehouses. Now, all of ours are really close together, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but it does give you a good overview of what all we have. And we could probably zoom out a little bit more here. It does look like kind of a cluster of things, which is a little bit unfortunate. But at least it's a cool way to easily pick through where your warehouses are. Because that was one thing that we had that ended up being a problem, was trying to understand what warehouse had what in it because we had so many of them. So I believe it said that we could click on a warehouse and it would give us a little bit more information. So if we click on our tools warehouse here, um, well, it doesn't really give us that much information on it. Now I might be clicking on it wrong. Let's zoom in here. 
We have it clicked, but it doesn't really show us much. Let's go back over here. Um, select the building to see the recent trips to and from your warehouses and ports. And that's what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. We clicked on it on that one and it actually gave us something. So T and salt here, they're going from this field right into there. You can see that little line connecting it there. So I guess if things were a little bit more spread out, you would be able to see this a little bit better. Now it does, again, it shows you the road efficiency of how quickly things are moving back and forth. And you can see it right here. So quick and short travel times are green and then long or slow travel is red. Um, now it doesn't look like any of our roads are at that point. Realistically, we, we really don't have anything that is going slow. Most everything is pretty much green, um, a little bit of yellow. So I, I think we're in a pretty good state for this one. So then let's jump over to the next one, which would be resource flow. So it shows where individual resources are flowing. Buildings that use or produce selected resources are colored according to how effectively they are working. Roads are colored to show how effectively resources are being transported. Once again, very similar to the last overlay. And then you can select a building to see more about it. So if we do this one, we can dive into a specific resource for us. Now, I think everything that is in red, everything that's in red, it says actually is inefficient, which is kind of interesting or ineffective, I should say. Effective is obviously green. We don't really actually have many green things like that is green. Our well is green. All of our fields are green, but any of our machinery is not except for this bad boy. This one is actually kind of in the middle too. It's orange. So that's actually a little bit interesting to see. And I'm surprised that this warehouse, oh, it's because it's empty. I'm guessing that it's an off color because it is empty. Everything else is inefficient, which is kind of interesting to see. Now let's click on water. It'll show you what is utilizing different water. So irrigated vegetable fields. Um, this is looking at the road, I guess. Uh, consumes drink. Consumes drink. Yeah, a lot of these are going to be consuming drinks. This is going to be producing, obviously. And then this is going to be consuming it and so on and so forth, which is pretty cool. And then we were hovering over the road, which will show you 271 drinks transported recently, excellent travel speed, long travel distance though. So that kind of gives you an insight into the different roads here. Now, obviously we put this well really far away. Um, it's a long travel distance, but actually, actually excellent travel speeds. Now it's funny that we see the travel speeds being called out here because there's nothing really that you can do about it. Obviously you could make things closer together that would probably increase the speed. But I know that in a future update, they were considering adding in different types of roads. And that's where this could be playing into. It could be a prelude to adding different roads that might be a little bit more effective on uh, moving materials around. Now let's like uh, select something different. Like if we were to do wood, we could come through here and it'll show you that these things are producing wood. Again, it says ineffect or inefficient. I think I said ineffective before, but now it's, a, it's actually inefficient. And it shows where wood has been traveling, as you can see. And this is our wood warehouse here. So it makes sense that it's coming to here and, and going um, over to here to the music shop, probably being utilized to make um, some musical instruments. Makes sense. And then this is our wood generator. So obviously the, the wood is going there as well. And you can see the thicker path that it's being taken is highlighted darker compared to that one, which is lighter. So really cool overlay, you get the gist of it. Let's jump on to the next one, which is occupancy. So this will show how occupied buildings are, both for accommodation and production buildings. It also shows the effectiveness of travel for peeps. And then, so it sounds like it's a very similar, the last two items for all of these seem to be the same thing. Efficiency of travel between home and work or just between locations. And then uh, you can select the building to see recent trips to and from um, certain places, which is pretty cool. And that's gonna be, again, similar between all of these overlays. So we hit the occupancy one. You can see where most of our peeps are going and where are they traveling to, which I guess can be kind of useful. I don't really see the big need for it because obviously you know where your peeps are gonna be at. I guess this could help if you really had a large settlement and you were trying to understand if you were low on peeps, but 
it's offering more insight than what I really think that you would have to get into. A cool option to have if you really wanted to, but I don't know if it's necessary. Um, and then obviously you can hold on or hover over the rows, it'll show you the trips and then you can hover over the buildings or click on the buildings. It'll actually show you who lives there and where they are going to. That could be kind of useful, but you don't really have that big of a say in where those workers are. So you couldn't tell these workers, hey, you're working in this field over here, we'll live in this house. We don't have the option to do that as far as I know. So again, a cool thing, maybe it's preluding to some features that are coming down the line, but for the time being, it's just really a cool overlay at this point. So hopping off of that, let's go to the next one. We have the happiness effect. Now this could be extremely useful because they make mention that happiness is a large part of this game once you hit certain population sizes but you never really understand where the unhappiness is coming from. Like it'll just say, oh, your peeps are unhappy. Or as we've seen in our series before, when we were doing our full series, it would show un like frowny faces above the different residents or above the different peeps because they were unhappy. Now with this, it'll actually give you a more in-depth view, which is awesome. So right now you can see what is giving negative effects to happiness. So if our peeps are having slight expectations like what we have right now, we can see, okay, well, these things are affecting it. These things are affecting it. Obviously, our um, water or our desalination plant for water production over here is affecting it. All these things over here are affecting it. But we're containing the pollution in most of these. Now, over here, obviously, we have some pollution, very polluted right here. And that is going to cause a high negative effect extremely red but these things are lower because we are monitoring it we do have this scrubber that is trying to clean up all the pollution in that area and then you can see over here it's bright green because we have a fountain over here it's bright green because we have a fountain here we have a fountain here we have some music over here um, we have a school there like a bunch of things keeping our peeps happy so it's kind of cool to be able to see that now we might be able to click on things. Are we able to see anything additional? I don't think so. Um, if you do hover over those different things, um, it'll, it'll let you know what they are, if there's pollution and so on and so forth. So then finally, that kind of leads into the final overlay, which is the pollution. So the pollution shows how quickly areas are being polluted or cleaned by um, different buildings, like our scrubber, like we just mentioned. So if we click over to pollution, you can see how we're doing now we have our scale over here so heavily heavy pollution is going to be red pollution will be orange uh, cleaner is struggling is actually going to be a yellow uh, cleaner keeping it keeping up which is green and then cleaner only very interesting scale here that uh, that we have there I don't know what cleaner only means um, I would assume that the the best tier would be just no pollution in general because really, we don't necessarily have a cleaner for all of this area over here, do we? We have a cleaner right there, but it, I guess its radius is all around here. It does have a quite a wide radius, but I guess it makes sense. I would have personally put it as pollution controlled or something like that, not just cleaner only. But anywho, I'm nitpicking on it. So as you can see, we have a very defined blue area here because there is no pollution coming from this. Now over here, we're getting a little bit of green where it's cleaner is keeping up with it because we do have pollution from our um, wood generator and we also have pollution from our um, water production here. And then I think we might have a light of pollution. No, no pollution from that. But our scrubber is keeping up with those, so it's fine. And very similar over here as well. We have our scrubber here, which has a decent size radius. There's no pollution being distributed over here, but where the pollution would be all through this from these buildings right here, it's being controlled. That's why it's green. It makes sense. Now, again, up in the highlands here where we haven't been controlling pollution, you can see where things are heavily polluted um, that should be cleaned up, but it's not to the point where it's necessarily affecting things. And then obviously you can move around and see different things. Obviously we have a scrubber over here, so on and so forth. So. It's pretty cool. Those are all the different overlays. I thought it was kind of cool to be able to go through and, and see that. So let's move then on to the next item that I want to show you.
All right, the next thing to bring up, again, a very convenient feature to now have is if you go into your start here, or our start, this is our island name, I guess I should say. If you go into your island name drop down, which we did a little bit earlier, you see it here at the top, other than just having the name of the island, you also have your planet here. And you have edit buttons, edit buttons by both. So for the start, obviously we're on Earth. And what we could do is we could edit the name of our planet right from here. Rather than having to go to a space view to edit it and then come back in, we can edit it right here, which is really cool to be able to see. Same with the island name. Obviously, we could always edit the island name from in here. But now we can uh, have a little bit more flexibility by jumping to different islands and uh, just jumping to different things in general. And we could even look at the whole planet if we want to. So all of the resources will show up here um, if need be. So we can look at the whole planet and see what we have on this whole entire planet in regards to resources. So you can see here the different breakout of things. You have 185 water, 223, 418. Now from what I'm guessing, 185 is probably what we have. This probably might be the demand of it. And that's probably our max capacity that we could be at if we were actually um, producing at max capacity maybe maybe i'm just a guessing on that one uh but yeah then you could obviously go to different islands and it's not like it's going to jump you to the different island as before where we would select a different island from this drop down it would bring us right to that island not necessarily in this case and we don't even have to do that for Earth. We could go to, let's say, Mars, because we have a decent amount of stuff on Mars. We can look at the whole planet right here. Now, unfortunately, and you could even go down into the different islands on that planet if you wanted to. So we can look at the whole entire planet as a whole, or we could look at Mars Colony 1. We could look at Mars Snow Colony and see a breakdown of things on there. See the different resources that we have available to us. See how our peeps are doing see what buildings that we have there and um, how our buildings are doing like if they are producing resources here we can see what it is doing there so it is a really really convenient breakdown of things now if we hop out of this obviously it's not going to take us right to that um, and then the other thing that we can look at now is if we go into our system view and let's say we're out here in our system view and we want to uh, get a little bit more in depth on something let's say mercury this time we can click on it um, and we could hit i think we can hit resources yep and it'll bring up right here all the resources that are on that planet so if you were in system view and you did want to see what resources are on that planet you can view it that way as well or you can hit view it'll bring you right into mercury here and then you can obviously look around now this was the planet that got hit by a space whale i believe and uh we have obviously not uh we have not rebuilt it fully just yet, and I, I don't really have any plans to do that right now. But anywho, so then what we could do is we could obviously go back out to our system view. We could head back to Earth. And yeah, so I think that is really the bulk of it. I've been trying to, to look through a lot of the patch notes, um, but other than that, there's really not much more that we that they have added in that's big that's notable the only other thing maybe that could be useful for some people is you can now destroy unutilized trade ships um that was one other thing that they did add in that i thought was notable to bring into the conversation about what was included in this update so if we did have a trade ship chilling out here that we weren't using for whatever reason we could destroy it um, I don't know if it works for the space ones, though, because we do have a few space ships that we do not use. Um, let me see here. I think we can go into here, manage shipping. I think we have some idle ships, if I am not mistaken. Idle is the Mariana. So if we find that bad, bad boy, is that you? Nope. Is that you? Yeah, that is you. Okay. So you are idle. It does not look like we can do it with spaceships, though. We can move it to a different planet if we want to, but it does not look like we can do it with those, which is a little bit unfortunate. But if you were, if you did have ships on land that you were not using, 
you should be able to get rid of them. Let me click on this bad boy. You could detach it, and I'm guessing once you detach it, you could probably delete it. So, But yeah, those are the main items in this update. I know I've been dragging on a lot. I've been talking a lot. Uh, but again, if you want the full patch notes, head over to their Discord and check it out over there. Even if you aren't into every nitty-gritty piece of the patch notes, it is a great community over there. I am part of their Discord, and I like keeping up with a few things here or there. They are really friendly, always willing to answer questions, and are always open to suggestions, um, especially if you're having troubles with some kind of bug or anything like that. You could always report it over there to them. But guys, with that being said, we're going to wrap this episode up a little bit early then because we've gone through everything that we need to. So I hope you enjoyed this one-off episode. As more updates come to this game, I'll probably continue putting out little update videos because I did love this game a lot and I would definitely recommend it. And maybe if there's a big enough update that warrants a new gameplay through, maybe we'll, uh, uh, you know, kind of take that as we go and see what happens. Um, but obviously, we're not to that point yet. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like down below. Or better yet, leave me a comment. Love to uh, know what you're thinking. Um, if you have questions on this um, update or anything like that, you can always just leave them down below. If you're new to the channel, you want to follow along, hit that subscribe button and bell notification. It'll let you know every single time a new episode is posted to the channel. I do stream over on Twitch. I have that linked in the description as well, along with my own personal Discord if you want to keep up to date with what is going on with the channel. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for sticking through to the end. I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy.